Alright, so we have Marlon Moraes versus Marab Devashwili. So, for Marab, his striking is improving, for sure. He doesn't throw a whole lot of combinations, likes to throw a lot of feints. Uh, if he does commit to a punch, or if he does commit to going forward and commit to some offense, it's either going to be a punch from his right-hand side or a strike from his right-hand side. Uh, so say like the naked overhand right, or a, a two, or a, a low calf kick, or something like that, from the rear leg. Or it's going to be a takedown. So that's basically what you have to expect when you're facing Warab, and it's not going to stop, <laughs> really. Uh, for Marlon Marais... Like, he does have the power, and he has the speed advantage in this one, for sure. He uh, throws everything with intent. He's got super devastating low calf kicks. Switch high kick is very fast. But all these techniques and all these kicks, he needs space. He needs space for his techniques, and if Morab puts the pressure on him early and doesn't give him any space, then it's going to be tough for Morais to, to get off and get his offense going. With the hands, uh, for, Mor for Morais... He has a nice counter overhand right, counter three when the opponent does close distance, or so a check left hook. Uh, he takes a big step in once when he wants to throw the big left hook, when he leads with the left hook. And he doesn't set up a lot of his power shots, really. Uh, if he's on the back foot, he's not setting up his power, his power shots, he's telegraphing them. Uh, yeah, he just kind of you know relies on his speed a little bit too much, and he does load up heavy on a lot of his punches. So he, he leads with the left hook quite a bit, and it's a bit telegraphed. It's... It's quite wound up, but he does get by just on his speed and his pure athleticism, really. One thing about Marais is that he is quite easily pressured, or he's quite easily convinced to take the back, uh, the back foot. And Marab, he looks to get you to do just that. Like, he looks to faint you to the fence, and then, you know, start his chain wrestling process. He's got really good chain wrestling. He'll catch a kick, get the opponent down, so if Mar uh, Marais ties to decides to go for any body kicks or low kicks or something like that, Rob's going to look to try to catch one of them, take him down. If he can't get that, he'll, you know, change it to a single leg. He'll use the single leg, either run the pipe from there, or look to just get a high single and then trip the back leg with a foot sweep or something like that. And if he can't get that, he'll transition to the body lock. You know, he tries to get the body lock every time in a scramble. He's looking for the body lock, and then once he's got the body lock, outside leg trips... Uh, foot stops, you know, sacrifice throws from there, you know, everything. He's He's got very nice chain wrestling. He's got a large, he's got a deep bag of tricks with his wrestling. The problem with Marab, though, is that he doesn't have great top control. Uh, he doesn't control the posts of his opponents, the legs or the hips at all, really. And that's why you see such a high takedown per 15 minutes um, strike rate. It's like 7 per 15 minutes or something like that. Uh, because he doesn't have the best top control. How these guys win fights, so for Marab, he's got good takedown defense, good scrambles, and he's got God-given cardio. Can go all day. For Marlon Marais, he's got nice kicks, uh, and he's he's very athletic. His athleticism helps him a lot. Uh, how these guys lose fights, so for Marab, he isn't a finisher, so he does give opponents, you know, pretty much the whole 15 minutes to either knock him out or submit him, and that's what happened in the Ricky Simone fight. Um... Marab was pretty much dominating the whole fight, got clipped at the end, I think, and fell into a guillotine, ended up sort of going out, but also sticking with it. I don't know. I really still, I still don't know to this day of um, what was happening in that fight, but um, it's just, that's what's going to happen. You're going to get caught by these submissions late in fights or these, these one-shot punches um, just because you won't be able to, you weren't able to finish your opponent once you did take them down to the ground and stuff like that, so it just gives you more opportunities to be finished if you're not a finisher yourself. For Marlon Marais, his output and his speed slows after one and a half rounds, and I think his chin might be done, honestly, it's looked real shoddy lately. Like a Marab standing KO on the feet would be just the, the nail in the coffin, and that would totally confirm that his chin is done because Marab doesn't have too much power. Alright, pass the victory for these two. For Marab, you're going to want to be on the front foot, you're going to want to get respect with your hands first. Uh, if you don't, and if you just shoot in without setting anything up, you could, you could, you know, end up like Aljo when Aljo first Marlon Marais. Aljo didn't get any respect with the hands. Uh, he just shot in blindly and, you know, got need for it a few times. I think he got knocked down before that as well, but he got need and uh, put out cold in this in spectacular fashion. For Marlon Marais, you want to hold the center of the octagon and stand your ground in the center of the octagon. Don't let him push you back to the fence. 
uh, utilize a lot of feints to keep him off you. Just try and trick him into fighting a low volume kickboxing match. You know, try and, you know, make it very feint heavy and make it very technical. You don't want to brawl too much. How is his fight going? Marlon is very dangerous if you give him space. So what the top guys have done in the division, they've figured out that what you need to do to beat Marlon is pressure him. And we've seen that with Aldo, Font, Sandhagen, Cejudo, all these guys came in with pressure heavy game plans and they melted him really. Uh, Henry is the most clear cut example of how dangerous Marlon is at range and how quickly he crumbles if you do put the pressure on him. Because uh, that's the way to nerf his super explosive kicking game. And if you're going to pressure him, you still have to watch out for like straight knees, flying knees, stuff like that, like the big left hook. But overall, he's just much more manageable when you are the one pressing the issue and you are the one going forward against Marlon Moraes. And you've got to imagine that's the game plan for Morab because he usually comes in with pretty heavy pressure and he likes to take the front foot. Uh, I think Morab's going to want to pressure him to the fence, grind him down with the wrestling, set a pace early with the wrestling and just kind of, you know, wearing him later on in the fight, maybe even get a finish. Morab's striking improvements have impressed me over the past few fights, but I don't think he should stand with Marlon for, for too long, honestly. He still has a few defensive holes. His stand-up is serviceable, but he has some glaring holes and a guy like Marlon is, is too dangerous to just stand with especially when you can likely get the entries that you want on your takedowns and you can just beat him every time in the scrambles. So, yeah, I, I misremembered Marlon's takedown defense as being really good. I thought it was really good because he was a championship at... He was a champion, sorry, at some other organization. He beat Josh Hill a few times. So I thought his takedown defense was quite good. Um, but after watching it on tape again, just... It, it looked pretty meh to me, honestly. It looked like he... Uh, gets taken down by double legs pretty easily. Um, also seeing Marlon get out scrambled in a wrestling transition by Rob Font was just such a big red flag for me. You know, Rob, Rob Font is not a very good scrambler and he's just got terrible defensive wrestling and he was out scrambling. Well, he out scrambled Marlon in that one transition and even if it was just one transition, that's just, that's, it's not on. You can't, can't be letting that happen, honestly. And Mirab, his gas tank is just ridiculous. Like, it's it's really hard to bet against or pick against these guys with just incredible cardio and guys that just won't stop with their grappling pressure, uh, with their wrestling pressure, like Mirab, Movsa Ivlovev, Greg Gillespie. Like, you know, these guys, they don't stop coming forward um, and they don't stop attempting takedowns. And, you know, they always compel the same kind of fight. And it's a fight that you're basically on the defensive the whole time and you just kind of have to accept it uh, either you have to land a huge shot or you have to be perfectly defensive but also be landing your offense in the transition so you have to kind of fight the perfect fight and you're still kind of catering to their game plan so yeah it, it's tough uh but yeah marlin he he seems to gas quicker in fights that evolve a lot of grappling as well a lot of clinching like, even if Marlon's able to stuff all the takedowns of Morab, which I don't see happening, he's still going to be rendered basically defensive the whole fight. And if Morab doesn't get murked on the takedown entry, he's going to be able to obtain some type of dominant grappling position, like even just controlling him against the fence. That That's say what you want about that, but it's a dominant grappling position. Uh, and there's not much any, anything... There's not much that Marlon can do about that if he's just getting held against the fence because I don't see him uh, being able to break off the fence and, you know, get in that space again because Morab's just going to close it again and grab and push him to the fence. But I think he's going to be taking him down anyway. He probably doesn't even need to rely on the fence clinch, but it's it's just an option there for Morab as well. I think he's going to be able to take him down even if Marlon does get up a few times. He's just going to gas, you know, after one and a half, maybe one to one and a half rounds. We saw how quickly he gassed, or he just looked really, uh, he just looked really, um, full of lactic acid, really, uh, after, uh, like, the first four minutes of the Rob Font fight, or however long that fight lasted, after he came in with that wrestling heavy attack, he looked really, you know, he just looked kind of flat, and, uh, just, you know, full of lactic acid after that, after the wrestling attack. Alright, so if you guys could like the video, that'd be awesome. Prediction is Marab by decision. Let's have a look at the line. Ugh, it's not great. It's not what I was looking for, but I still think 
Two dollars ten's decent, or plus one ten or whatever that is. Uh, what is Marlin in round one? Doesn't have it here. Hopefully it's on another book. I mean, Marlin in round one is probably what I'll play if I like Marlin. Or plus 900. What's Devash Willy in round three? Or Devash Willy in round three, maybe. But yeah, the prediction... Uh, the, sorry, the decision line's not bad, honestly. Or just like a good old live bet after round one on Marab because Marais will probably have a more success than he's going to have in the rest of the fight in the first round. Uh, so if Marais is ever going to have a, take a round off Marab, it's going to be the first round and hopefully we get some decent odds uh, on Marab after round one.